Hi, here at Infosec 2024 with Navroop from Armatex. Navroop, thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to me. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. So uh, you're the CEO of Armatex. Just really briefly, what does Armatex do? What kind of problems are you attempting to solve here? So Armatex provides for secure out-of-band collaboration for incident response, security operations, threat intelligence sharing. Think of it like the classified network for the private sector. That's really cool. And we spoke to your colleague yesterday, and that was uh, that was some uh, that's some great conversation. And something that I got from yesterday was that you are kind of giving away instant response tabletop exercise plans, which you know that seems really cool. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, alongside the international law firm Crowell and Mooring. We at Armatex decided to publish a set of incident response tabletop exercises. The first guide came out in Q4 of 2023. It consisted of three modules. One was about uh, a ransomware incident has taken place. What are the kinds of things you need to be thinking about addressing? But rather than addressing kind of the last 10 years of technical tabletop exercises that everyone else had already done, we specifically chose to focus on the role of the rest of the organization and its executives, the boards, your, your directors, folks who otherwise may not be as well versed in what their role is during an actual breach. The second module then goes on to think about things like business continuity, continuity of operations, what are the kinds of challenges that need to be addressed there. And then finally, in that guide, we also cover uh, topics like post-breach obligations. In the latest guide, which actually just dropped yesterday in conjunction with the start of uh, InfoSec 2024 here in Europe, we launched uh, the Q2 2024 release. We decided to accelerate that because of some of the changing fact patterns we'd seen around attacks from places like the Scattered Spider. And we thought it was worthwhile to accelerate the drop of a release that would help folks actually you know, prepare in real time for the kind of attacks we're facing today. That's really good. And that's something that I know, kind of the management response of incident response. You know, we have the last year regulations and requirements for reporting to various statutory authorities. And those are things that aren't necessarily technical responses. They are... Um, you know, things that need to be thought about, need to be thought about pro properly. So it's good that these things can be drilled and, uh, and worked on. Yeah, 100%. You know, when, when we think about where regulatory changes have gone now, you, you have incident response reporting obligations under the SEC. You've got DORA coming into being here in Europe. You've got NIS2. You've got a number of different bodies now looking to your management team and saying, you have to have better oversight over both cybersecurity, but also greater oversight over your organization's incident response preparedness. Mm. And a part of that is even addressing how it is you're going to report information to shareholders, to regulators, and other third parties that are, have a vested interest in the health of your organization. Statements you make today could actually be held against you later if they're later found to be untrue, even though they might be based on facts that you didn't yet know at that time. And so, you know, we, in preparation for that, We've actually, as part of module two for this latest tabletop guide, have actually given you a set of exercises to specifically help the organization drill around that. And that is very much, to your point, not a technical thing. That's all around operational resilience and how the organization thinks about this. Absolutely, and it's certainly important to kind of have these things drilled and to understand what you're gonna do before they happen. Final question, and it's one that I'm asking everyone, and it's a thorny issue as well. A lot of governments are kind of talking about criminalizing the payment of ransomware. Uh, kind of demands. Uh, is that a realistic approach? Is that the right way to go about it? Um, I know there's probably not a straight answer, but what are your thoughts? So it, it, it's interesting. Right now, I look at the ransom payment that's being extracted as low hanging fruit for the attacker. The reality is, is right now the attacker is becoming far more sophisticated. And with both generative AI and the coming forward versions of AI that are going to have greater reasoning capabilities, I actually think they're going to move away from the low level hanging fruit of the ransomware payment anyways, towards really determining specific points of value in what they steal from you. And then based on that valuation, figure out how to specifically monetize that element of what was stolen. Mm -hmm. If I steal your trade secret, that's worth probably far more than me just saying, hey, I've got 100 gigabytes worth of your files. I now know I've got something that's specifically painful to you, like Kentucky Fried Chicken's you know, seven herbs and spices blend, whatever it is, or the Coca-Cola recipe. I've got that. That's actually worth a lot more than that generic ransom payment you would have made 
or me stealing 100 gigabytes worth of files. Similarly, if I steal certain other non-public information that might be trade-worthy, that's also going to be worth a lot more than that ransomware payment. All we're going to do is force the attackers to move away from that low level, you know, the lowest hanging fruit on the ransomware payments, two things that they're going to be able to use to even further monetize, and they're just going to use that increased profit margin on their attacks to go levy even further attacks. Yeah. Certainly an interesting insight, and it's often been my opinion that you know, if you threaten an organized criminal gang's revenue stream, they're not going to suddenly get legitimate jobs. They're going to hit where it hurts even worse. That's right. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, and I wish Thank you all the you. best at the show.